Good afternoon, Manufacturing All-Stars, and welcome to this episode of Manufacturing Happy Hour. Today, you are going to learn what IT and OT convergence really means and the results you might see by embarking on your own IT and OT convergence journey. I'm joined by Rockwell Automation Chief Information Officer, Chris Nardecchia. Cheers, Chris. Cheers. Thank you, Chris. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hmm. Pleasure to have you here today. And to kind of start things off for our customer audience out there, the first question I've got for you is, what does IT and OT convergence really mean? It's a term we hear all the time when talking about the Internet, internet of Things, but what would be like a base definition? Yeah, I, I like to think about IT, OT convergence in kind of three kind of buckets, right? Mm -hmm. The first one uh, in the, is the simplest definition of uh, connecting information technology, the uh -huh. data and systems used in, in business transactions with the operational technology uh, systems, industrial control systems, things that manage processes and events. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the simplest high level definition. But if we go a little deeper on that, it's, it's more about um, connecting raw materials mm -hmm. to customers, right? Mm. So all the data flow that flows from the raw material suppliers through the manufacturing supply chain out to end customers, okay. and then developing insights from that. So if you think about it in terms of product design and development, that's where innovation occurs in a company, where you're mm -hmm. developing your, your product design, uh, you, then you move it into an operational component of manufacturing it, mm -hmm. and then there's a strategic component of that, your business systems that, that manage it. So you're, you're really along this continuum of um, you know, innovation to um, you know, t the manufacturing and then strategy. Got it. Well, now that we've got some base definition around it, you know, why is it critical that manufacturers start this IT and OT convergence now based yeah. on the current competitive landscape? Yeah, wh why now? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's all about productivity, uh -huh. profitability, mm -hmm. uh, improving your operating margins, mm -hmm. and then looking at new revenue streams, right? So yeah. you know, how are you creating new value in your company? Um, and and speed, to, speed to and speed in market. You can't do that without uh, integrating the data across your supply chain and gaining insights from that. Mm -hmm. So, so I, th I think it's about it's about those components fundamentally, mm -hmm. um, and then in the end, it's all about customer acquisition and retention. So, understanding sure. your customer and all the data around that, uh, and gaining insights from that, um, you know, to to see new opportunities, see correlations, improve the productivity of your plants, um, and and sus and sustain your operations. Now, when we're talking about you know using data to improve productivity, one thing that always helps me and hopefully helps the customer audience as well is, do you have like a story or an example from your experience? Because you've been in the life science industry, now you're in the role here at Rockwell. What are some of the things you've seen? Yeah, so, uh, so, so yeah, I was I was in an industry that, in in many ways, right? You th you think about it, it's making a medicine, some sort of pharmaceutical product that either through a chem chemical synthesis or mm -hmm. a biological process, mm -hmm. um, but you're really making two products in that industry, and I think there's a lot of industries. You know, One is your kind of physical product, and one's all the information around it. You have mm -hmm. to submit a lot of data, there's a lot of regulatory oh, requirements. So so in the company I was with, we, we, we were a well-run company. We're sitting on mounds and mounds of data. Mm -hmm. The problem was is that we couldn't gather any insights from that data. We, we, so lots of data, no information, and even less insights around that. Sure. So, so we, and, and we were in the typical kind of approach where someone would come and say, hey, I want to improve this. I need a report. You know, generate that report for me. And as soon as the report was done, it was obsolete, right? It was static or it was old information. Mm -hmm. So we took a, a different approach. We said, L let's, let's approach this from what are your biggest problems? Let's identify your biggest pain points or mm -hmm. things that you couldn't solve before. Yep. Now let's go collect the data around those, around that problem. Mm -hmm. Let's look for correlations and let's visualize that and let's do it in real time. Yep. So you're, you're instantly getting information and you can develop insights and, and mm -hmm. you know, see your operations mm -hmm. and where you can do correlations. So it, it originally started with really it, it, at the basic level What's the visibility? Give me visibility. Mm -hmm. Let me see what's really going on. Let me do batch over batch comparison, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th 
then it matured to, well, maybe I can start do taking some actions from that data. Okay. Can I, can I, um, you know, m maybe instead of an operator looking at a panel and getting this visualization, yeah. can we send out a chat bot, right? We can oh, okay. notify something, we can give an event, right? And then we matured to the next level where we can close that loop where we say, I don't even need to notify something, the machine can close that loop and take mm -hmm. the action at the manufacturing floor. So that's, so that's really pretty powerful when you think about it. Definitely. So there was some big problems we were able to solve mm -hmm. um, when you start to mash up data from that's in a structured format, it's temperatures, pressures, valve movements, that sort of thing, and then mm -hmm. your more unstructured content, things that appear in procedures or recipes, they're text, right, they're natural language. Mm -hmm. When you mash those two things up, you can start to do a lot of amazing things. So, so some of the big problems we solved were productivity um, around search, uh, being okay. able to find things, right? Yep. So I remember there, there, was, there, was, there was one story where the head of our development organization said, you know, we have all this data out there from decades ago where we ran a lab um, mm -hmm. analysis on a certain chemical entity. And, you know, we're investigating this new drug and instead of being able to find those previous lab results, they would just redo the test because they couldn't search it. So mm -hmm. with the technologies we put in, things that they couldn't do before of finding place we solved in, in minutes. There was another uh, another couple of good use cases. One was in in pharmaceutical industries and in many industries, including you know our own. You want to do what's called lot genealogy, being able to trace mm -hmm. your product all the way through the supply chain, what raw materials went into it, yeah. all the way out to the end customer, and what happened in between. Mm -hmm. And in the pharmaceutical industry, sometimes you you know you might have to do a recall or do an investigation as highly regulated. Mm -hmm. So we built a lot genealogy application that previously was done in massive spreadsheets, and if you had to do an investigation and trace something, it might take an analyst months to get to a result. Yeah. Well, we took we turned those months into minutes yeah. by visualization of all that data because the technologies can handle vast amounts of data and mm -hmm. do it very quickly and visualize those. Uh, the third case that I'll give you is around energy management, um, wow. where you know, controlling a facility like we're sitting in today, the air conditioning and cooling mm -hmm. um, in a facility. And you can imagine in a manufacturing plant, it's even more intensive. So optimizing your energy usage from, mm -hmm. um, you know, cost savings and sustainability standpoint, you know, get your lead certification, all those things is an important thing in almost any industry. Mm -hmm. um, there, we, we were able to implement tools by aggregating the data gaining uh -huh. insights and using advanced algorithms to predict where there might be problems. Where, for example, uh, a heating unit um, is turning on the, st it, 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 it's not calling for steam, but the steam valve's leaking open. Mm -hmm. And the, the technologies can today can predict like what is the likely problem and then you can send a technician out to repair that problem. So, so there's kind of three kind of use cases, one on being able to search massive amounts of data. Yep. Um, one on the you know kind of energy management, mm -hmm. um, and then you know just general productivity and visualization on yields. Absolutely. Yield no, that was that's a great summary, and, and I caught some of the things I took from that. It all started with uh, having a lot of data and finding the right correlations, and that seems to be when customers are looking at all the information they have. Yeah. That's where a lot of people get stuck is like identifying that data right off the bat. Yeah, and I, I think you know sometimes people get overwhelmed with the data and they mm -hmm. think, well, I got to collect it all, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's the first thing I do. And I would caution against that. I would say let's identify the problem first yep. and collect only the data that's needed for that problem, mm -hmm. and then and then continue to add to that that database or that, you know, data lake, um, yeah. you know, is the more common way to do this today um, and, and kind of build on it rather mm -hmm. than have a big effort to collect it all and you, you're not sure what problem you're solving. One, 100% <laughs> agree. And, and since you've since you've seen this from multiple applications as, as you just went through multiple scenarios, what's something that surprised you in your journeys with IT, OT convergence? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I, I'd say I've, I've probably had a couple of big surprises. Okay. Um, w one is as we as as I've been on these journeys, I'm still surprised at the number of skeptics um, mm -hmm. it, it, that you know they don't believe this stuff is real. Um, it, 
you know, their toys, right? I, I mean, some very intelligent uh, and technical people, engineers and scientists, you know, would refer to some of these advanced algorithms or these visualizations as toys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I understand, you know, be, being in IT for a long time, I understand where that's coming from because there's been lots of projects, big programs in IT where you spend a lot of resources on and then you get the, to the end of it and you're like, what, what did I really get out of that, right? Um, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I understand where that's coming from, but we're in a different era, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. These technologies are very advanced. Mm -hmm. You can implement them quickly and mm -hmm. you can achieve results quickly. So I was a little yeah. surprised that there was still this skepticism out there, which just to me means you got to do a little bit of change management, education, um, you know, doing videos like this is sure. a good way to educate on the, yeah. the process for even executives, right, to mm -hmm. understand it. So I think, you know, the learning there was you got to spend time in, mm -hmm. in educating and getting people up to speed because in some cases, you know, some of this might be scary. So that's, it, that's one kind of learning. The other, you know, kind of takeaway or learning I got is after we started to deliver results, mm -hmm. um, the results were big, right? They were probably bigger than you yeah. expected, right? You, mm -hmm. in some cases, you're not talking about a 10 percent improvement; you're talking 30, 40 percent improvements, really? right? So, you know, that's like pretty meaningful and gets people's mm -hmm. attention. So, we got to a point where we were delivering such good outcomes that the demand really increased. So, the skeptics mm -hmm. started to hear others, you know, results and like, oh, I want on board. I want to solve this problem. I want to solve that problem, right? So, mm -hmm. so I think. You know, just bearing that in mind that you probably want to have a, a community of practice that builds up over time so you can manage all the demand that comes, comes, comes with it as you start to achieve big results. Great, great insights, great <laughs> answers. You've, you've given us a lot of great information today from specific scenarios to quantifying mm -hmm. the results that you've seen. Now, for anyone out there that might just be starting, looking to start, maybe they're already down the path a little bit, what advice do you have as a call to action for getting started? Yeah, I, I would say, you know, there's probably a few things to keep in mind. W one is, you know what, learn by doing. Mm -hmm. just, just get out there and get started and do it. Don't, you don't need to build, like, you know, big business requirements, a, a 10-year project or anything like that. You, you need to start small but with meaningful, mm -hmm. um, meaningful pilots or use cases. I like to think that if you can deliver something, you, you want to pick a use case that has two components to it. One, you can complete it in one to three months, mm -hmm. right? So no more than three months. People don't have the attention span to, you know, invest Great that tip. amount of money. Yeah. Money. So, so number one is do something you can tackle in one to three months, and number two, do something that has a wow factor. Yeah. You can't just deliver a little pilot and says, well, see, the technology works. It like has to deliver a business results that wake people up and say, yeah. oh, oh my gosh, this stuff is real. Let's do more of that. So I'd say those are kind of two you know, key things. Short duration, hit it quick, get involved, you know, build, build the team around. We're going to get something done quick and make sure it's meaningful. Um, you know, I'd say those are kind of two, you know, just quick points of, of get started and call to action. Great, great actions, great tips. I've got to thank you so much for all the insight you provided on today's show. So cheers, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. And good luck to you. <laughs> Absolutely. Like Chris said, when you're out there and you're trying to approach ITOT convergence, stay innovative, stay thirsty. And then we hope <laughs> to see you back here on Manufacturing Happy Hour again real soon. Cheers.